All right, this is Chris from Newton again, and today we're going to talk a little bit about what you can find on the GMAT. Uh, so for those of you who are just starting the process of you know, looking at business schools, and I think I want to go get an MBA, and i got to take this big test, what's on it? We're here to help you. So let's first talk about the quantitative part. Um, on the quantitative section, you're going to find things like arithmetic, which includes fractions, uh, ratios, percents, basic calculations, uh, things you've been doing most of your life. Uh, you're going to have number properties. Now this is going to talk about things like evens and odds, um, positives and negatives, uh, sets, statistics, uh, properties about the way that numbers behave differently, prime numbers, things like that. So those are number properties. You're going to find that there's a lot of algebra on the exam. This is the stuff that you got into back in middle school. Uh, you're going to talk about uh, equations and inequalities, um, polynomials, uh, some word problems, which are essentially textual versions of equations. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of algebra underlying the entire exam. Uh, geometry is going to be on there. Uh, angles, triangles, squares, rectangles, quadrilaterals, um, properties there in things like area and uh, perimeter, all that jazz. So a lot of geometry. Uh, and then finally you're going to have some more advanced concepts and these are things that are a little further afield. You're going to talk about things like absolute value which kind of relates back to algebra. Uh, rates and sequences, so when you talk about rates, you know, uh, two people are painting a house, one does it at this rate, one does it at the other, how long will it take them to paint the house together. Um, things like the classic, you know, one train leaves Chicago uh, hurtling towards New York while another train goes towards Chicago, when do they meet, so rate problems. Uh, probability uh, is going to be on there, and probability a little more advanced uh, than probably you, you use in your everyday life. And then combinatorics, and combinatorics deals with uh, sets and probability of things happening and, and different um, uh, situations like that. Like you have a, a wardrobe that has five shirts and you have three pairs of pants, how many total outfits do you have? So working with things like that. So that's quantitative. Uh, on the verbal side of things, you're going to find a, a spread of concepts as well. You're going to find in the uh, sentence correction area, you're going to be dealing with uh, grammar, a ton of grammar on the exam, uh, diction, idiomatic phrases, syntax, things like this. Uh, you're going to find on the reading comp section, you're going to have to uh, quickly absorb content. Uh, you're going to have to identify uh, authors' themes. Um, and structure of arguments. Uh, you're going to have to pay special attention to detail, uh, but knowing when to pay attention to detail and when not to pay attention to detail. Uh, the big thing is this is a uh, ability test. Uh, this isn't a, a content test, so you don't have to memorize facts and that kind of things. Uh, so controlling uh, the mastery of detail is a big thing. And then in the critical reasoning section, you're going to be dealing with understanding and manipulating arguments. So you're going to be given prompts that have certain situations, and then you have to do something to them. Uh, you might have to, to weaken the argument or identify the particular structure that an, argu uh, an author is using in this argument um, and, and assess the overall effectiveness therein. Uh, so that's what you're going to find in the two main sections content-wise. So let's take a look at the actual uh, question types that you're going to find on the GMAT. Uh, we'll start again with quantitative. Uh, one of the questions you're going to find there is called data sufficiency, and that's something that most of you, um, unless you've taken the GMAT before, have never seen. Uh, and that's because they created the question to put it on the GMAT. Uh, the idea here is that you're going to get a question, and then you get two pieces of data. Your task is not really to answer the question itself, but your task is to tell how much of this data below do I need if I were to answer the question. Do I need just one piece of information? Do I need to put the two together? Can I not answer this question even if I do that? Uh, so it's a strange kind of framework, um, but once you get used to it, you'll find that you can master it you know, just as easily as other areas. But it's definitely a big stumbling block uh, for a lot of students when they first start off. Again, it's very unfamiliar. The other type of question you'll find in quantitative is much more familiar, and that's the problem solving. Problem solving are you know, traditional equations, they're word problems, they're geometric figures. Um, and then you'll have five multiple choice answers and you pick the correct answer. So these are the math questions you've seen most of your life. Uh, so that's uh, most of the, uh, the quantitative section. So then over on the verbal side, you're going to find uh, sentence correction. Now what you're given here is essentially a, a grammatical task. You're given a little bit of a passage, which may be a couple sentences, and a portion of that is underlined. Uh, it could be one word, it could be the entire prompt or, or any part therein. What you have to do is take anything that's not underlined as given and then edit what's underlined if there are grammatical mistakes. Now in this case your first answer is always going to be the same thing, uh, your first answer choice is going to be the same thing as in the prompt. So 
there may be no mistake at all, so you have to recognize that first. But if you do see a mistake, you then have to pick from the remaining choices to correct whatever that error is and not introduce new errors. And sometimes there may be multiple errors in some of the more difficult problems. So essentially what you have to do is revise the particular prompt in a way that's grammatically correct and uh, maintains the original integrity of the statement. So that's sentence correction. Uh, the next thing you're going to find is critical uh, reasoning. In the critical reasoning area, you're given uh, some sort of argument or some evidence you know, uh, from an author's perspective. And then you're given a task that's either weaken the argument, identify flaws in the argument, strengthen the argument, a number of things like that that are going to get at the heart of what the author has done and that get at your understanding of how the construction of that and the structure of the argument uh, can be influenced. So you're then given five uh, questions, again multiple choice, uh, in which to you know, act upon that situation. And then finally, the last type of question is something that's familiar uh, from many uh, tests that you've taken in the past, and that's going to be the reading comprehension section. Now in this area, you're going to be given a passage. Uh, you're going to have to read through that passage and then answer a number of questions uh, that deal with what you've read in there. Uh, you'll have to answer questions about what was the author's purpose, uh, what was the author's opinion, was there some comparison and contrast going on in there, uh, a number of different things like that. Um, so that's reading comprehension, again, something you're familiar with. So there are all the question types that you're going to see. So let's talk about uh, how much uh, of each of these things you'll find there. So the test starts off uh, with your essay section. Now we haven't talked about the essay section, so let's mention that now. You're going to get two essays, and this is called the analytical writing assessment. One of them is called the analysis of an issue, and the other one is called analysis of an argument. In the issue prompt, you're given some sort of situation with some data, and your job is to develop your own argument around it. Do you agree with it? Do you not agree with it? Um, what sort of sorting, uh, supporting evidence can you put together? It's, it's essentially getting at your ability to communicate effectively and efficiently. Now in the other prompt, you're going to get analysis of an argument. And in that case, you are given uh, someone else's argument, a couple sentences of that, and you have a choice to say, well, this argument is correct because, or this argument is weak because, and then you break it down. In either direction you can go, there's no correct answer. Uh, but most of the time, it's much easier to attack the argument, simply because it's hard to make any really sound argument with only three or four sentences, which is what the prompt is. There's usually a lot of loopholes, even if the crux of the argument seems to be sound. Um, so it's a little easier to attack that and be critical of the passage. But again, you can go either way. So each of those is going to be 30-minute uh, essays, and that's the analytical writing assessment. So after you've gone through uh, the first hour of the exam, and you've written your essays, you're going to get to the multiple choice sections. Uh, in quantitative, those two problem types that we saw, data sufficiency, that's going to be about 40% of the questions that you get. In all, you're going to see 37 uh, quantitative questions, and you have 37 minutes to answer those. So right around uh, two minutes apiece. So after that, a uh, little more than an hour, you're going to finish up and you're going to get to the verbal. And again, you're going to see sentence correction, critical reasoning, and reading comp questions. You're going to get 41 total of those, which are spread pretty evenly uh, throughout, uh, maybe a little more sentence correction. But again, you'll get 75 minutes for that section as well. Uh, so that's a little less than two minutes per question. And don't forget, since you're reading passages, uh, that time is going to be taken out. Uh, so the sentence correction go a little faster. You can usually get them done in a minute to a minute and a half. So all in all, you're going to answer 78 multiple choice questions with two essays. It's going to take you somewhere in the realm of four hours for the full day, given your breaks and such. So it's a little bit of a long day. But if you're well prepared, we wish you the best of success and good luck on the GMAT.